Stedman is at fullback for the Lions. On the right wing, Rock and Rod Wishart has recovered from a hamstring strain and will take the kicks tonight. Paul Newlove replaces Graham Hellis. Superstar Laurie Daly is back in the darker shade of the green machine tonight. Daryl Powell comes out of the second division Sheffield Eagles. A legend in his own league, Mel Meninga leads the Kangaroos from number four, alongside St Helens Paul Lachlan. On the left wing, Broncos strongman Mick Hancock is back into test footy, alongside Martin Chariots of Fire, the superstar lion with 19 tries. Jacko and Gaza, the battle of the five-eighths. Schofield, the 1991 Man of Steel, takes over as captain. At halfback, Ellen Alfie Langer and the veteran of five Ashes series, Wiggins' Andy Gregory, comes off the injury list to play. Glenn Lazarus heads the hit-up men. Kelvin Skerritt, one of five Wigan players in the British pack. The darts from dummy half. Steve Walters holds off the challenge from his brother. Martin Dermott has established himself as the first choice hooker for Britain. The informed props. New South Wales State of Origin star Paul Harrigan and Lee Crooks forces his way in after a big game against the Steelers. In the second row, Belmain's Paul Surinan is back, while Dennis Betts is a good bet for the forward of the night. Bobby Libner returns to test footy after breaking his leg last year against the Kiwis. And for Great Britain, the hard-working Andy Platt. World-class forward Bradley Clyde locks the crank kangaroo scrum, while Phil Clark comes in for the injured Ellery Handley. On the reserves bench, Mackay, Gillespie, Fittler and Walters come out of the kangaroos pouch. Lydon, Lucas, Edwards and Jackson warm the bench for the line. To the Australian kangaroos, our commentators are now ready. Let's go to the Sydney Football Stadium live for the KFC Battle of the Ashes. Here's Dave Morrow and Billy Anderson. inside the great uh, the Australian territory and getting back Eddinghausen has the ball back on the quarter line runs it out for Australia and great Great Britain defence hems him in down on the quarter line 10 in from touch on this western side of the field which are taken and that's the area that Great Britain have worked on they've realised in previous test series against Australia they haven't had the condition and they haven't had the defence to go for the full 80 minutes but early indications here they've dropped off a tackle now that's what they're going to have to eradicate because the Australians will keep coming that was Linda who made the break, and here's Harrigan having his first test match. They join him the chief he hails from Newcastle, and don't be surprised if he has a blinder this afternoon. And the first player to come from Newcastle in 20 years to make a, uh, a game to play for Australia on, on Australian soil. That's Stedman. He had a sit with the Gold Coast a couple of years ago. Plays now with Castleford. You may remember back in that Challenge Cup final made that awful error early 
long not allowed Wigan, that champion side, that first smell of success at Wembley. Great Britain on the quarter line, bringing it back again. And it seems that Crook and Skerritt have swapped jumpers again. Well, I always had the impression of Lee Crooks that he was a fantastic ball player. And here's Opia! Here's the first hand for a fire! He's over the halfway! He gets around! Gets around with him! Will he get around? Get it! Has he put a foot in the cup? He has! Great play in his head! With him stride! He couldn't stop him! But Opia! The last hand of the way! And heading out Great work! Here's an example of what Mark the Fire can do. Look at him stand. Well, the early indications were there, David. Great Britain played towards the fire's wing. It was a long ball to get it to him. He got outside the Australian defence. There's the scrum, and here's the altercation that happened after it between Gregory and, of course, Alan Langer. Here's Lazarus taking it up. 11 metres inside Australia's territory, another penalty. Lazarus is not well. Dermot's up there being spoken to by the referee. The indication there that it was going to be a blood bin, that he'll go from the field. You can see why. There's Andy Gosh, Gregory moving back into his position, driving his troops there. on. Just it's one foot, you know, I think that his little toe was in touch. Well, it was a nasty head gash to Lazarus. We only had that one quick shot of it, and here it is, Brian Hollis, the Australian trainer, trying to clean it New up. Zealand, the Here's Australia going to kick for touch, and Lazarus, he's got to come off. Now, under, of course, Winfield Cup rules, he has to go to the blood bin. Now, he wants to stay on. Well, he's got no choice. He's got to come off, and the referee's indicated that he's got to be replaced, regardless of what he thinks. And on comes Gillespie. Australia won't lose anything here by having Gillespie on. But Lazarus was keen. That's how fired up the man formerly from Canberra and now with the Broncos was. Scenes there of uh, test matches of the past. Australia with two successive penalties. Bring it up now through Harrigan. And good defence from Great Britain. Dermot's in there. So too was Crooks. Lending a bit of assistance in the end was Andy Platt. A Surinan. He was flat-footed when he got that. Great defence from Great Britain. The ball's lost. Australia managed to recover. The penalty, though, in fact, he's going to put a scrum down. He's ruled that Surinan's knocked it on. Great Britain with the ball, and it's Schofield who's going to kick downfield straight away. They're trying to use obvious pace. Getting back there, I think you'll find Australia will have the day saved by Hancock. Coming through with Stedman and a fire. Penalty against Stedman in front of the kicker. We might get a chance to see some of that again. Well, once, once again, it was an example of Great Britain playing for, for a fire. They kicked the ball downfield. The chasers were well in front. A fire was probably behind, but the first man to get there wasn't, and referee Hale adjudicated, and Australia get the luxury of another penalty to get them out of some trouble. Touch is found just outside the quarter line. Graham Stedman, the man who gave the penalty away, as Gillespie takes it up. But obviously the tactics from Great Britain utilise obvious speed as much as possible, and why not? You've got to play to your strengths. They've got a good, hard-working pack of forwards and pace out wide. Open side they come. Langer. And Clyde is set upon and immediately claimed by his opposite number, Phil Clark. Good defence. and thought about the kick. Eddinghausen under pressure has to get his kick in and he decides to run it instead and gets the ball almost to halfway. He got out of that well, Eddinghausen. Now this is the last tackle. Edding, I should say Langer will kick. No, he doesn't. It comes to Jackson. Jackson pops the pass over the top. Here's Hancock with a dead. Hancock comes back on the inside and the movement finally breaks down almost on the British quarter line. But fine attacking play from Australia. Only early experience. 
changes, but all, already we can see that there is commitment in the British defence, and we can see that they're prepared to try things when they've got the ball. So the first spark in attack of Australia down the left flank, and I wouldn't mind betting that's where most of the attacking flair will come from, from the Aussies, utilising the speed of Hancock, who's been in fine form recently. That's Bill Clark. Penalty against Australia up inside the five. And that was, and that was one that they needed. needed. replay here it is there's the tackle over the top by Andy Gregory on Peter Jackson that was a high shot Hale had no decision and it's going to be 10 minutes in the sim bin now that harks back to the, the recent decision by the international board they're going to clamp down on high tackles this is the first test match that's been played under those conditions. There was the test for it. Gregory High, we saw it on the KFC replay. He hit Jackson over the top and he's got 10 minutes in the sin bin for it. Over to you, David. Australia get another penalty here as we hurriedly uh, swap headphones here. We've had all sorts of technical difficulties, but let's see how we go from here. And it's Australia who find touch on the quarter line. And I hope you'll bear with us for the uh, for the first 10 minutes as Australia take it across field through Wishart. And here go Australia through Harrigan and the big fellow. Is he going to make Great Britain pay for the indiscretion of Gregory? Australia have nine more minutes playing against only 12 men. Great pass, but not well taken. Great defence. Wasn't that a good hit? A great hit then by Andy Platt. Oh, Linda doesn't know where he is. In Disneyland, here it is on the KFC replay. Hit in a square tackle, a fair tackle on the ball. Jolden loose. So now it's the Great Britain bringing the ball back, and this is Crooks out towards the quarter line. Gillespie was the defender. Great Britain showing in that area where they had to improve. Back in 82, they couldn't tackle. By 86, they'd improved somewhat. By 88, they'd improved markedly. By 90, they were more than a contest. And now, is this going to be the first time since 1970 that the Ashes, this battle for the KFC Ashes, is it going to see Great Britain take them home to England? They're playing good football at the moment. They're holding Australia. And those tackles, Bill, they're bone shakers. They've been bone shakers. As it's Great Britain now, through the hook of Dermot, gets it away. And now taking it up, Skerritt. As Great Britain bring it up, 10 metres, their own side of halfway, across field, Betts. Betts hasn't been playing as well as what he has. 
or what it can just inside Great Britain's territory. Schofield thought about the long kick out for a fire, chips over the top, thought about uh, taking a dive. He did. The referee said it was a dive and that he's put run through after the chip. His play wasn't impeded deliberately by an Australian. You don't have to get out of the road. mistake and Great Britain have the ball on the halfway line Great Britain bring it up just inside Australia's territory still no score in this KFC Battle of the Ashes 27 and a half minutes remaining and missed tackles already tackles in possession so Great Britain and Australia are fairly even contest as far as possessions concerned and the kick again from Schofield is fielded by Eddinghausen. Wishart back towards the quarter line. Steve Walters the dummy half. Oh that was Ford and the referees picked it up. No risk at all about that. And this will give Great Britain a great platform to go on the attack. Scrum going down on the Australian quarter line. The KFC replay clearly shows that Walters threw that ball forward. And Schofield feeding the scrums. It's Great Britain's ball. This is Clark. He came into the side for Hanley, and he's still going, and a good run from the lock forward. Great run, in fact. Out. Plays it quickly. Open side they come. This is Great Britain through Stedman. Now it's Australia's turn to see what they can do in defence. Penalty goes to Great Britain, and they'll have a shot at goal from here, you'd think. Lockwood coming across, the big, long strider, who plays for St Helens and can kick the ball a country mile. In fact, he could probably kick it across Cook straight if he wanted to. Well, he can really kick the ball. Games at this level are all about sustained pressure, and neither side's been able to spend a lot of time in one another's quarter. They've got there, but then they're forfeited. Now, this is the first real chance that Great Britain have had. They've got a chance now through the penalty to convert that into points. And Paul Lachlan... Lachlan, who's a centre from the St Helens Club. He's only 25. He's a big lump of a fellow. 15 stone in the old language, 95 kilograms. He's just over six foot two. He's played 14 tests. This is his 15th. He missed the first test. And here's the kick from Lachlan. It's high. Doesn't make it. And Eddinghausen manages to field it for Australia and get it back into the field of play. Linda, he got that heavy knock earlier in that good tackle, didn't play it correctly but got away with it. Now Harrigan takes it up strongly. This has been a tough, hard first 15 minutes in this KFC battle for the Ashes. Gregory, 10 in the bin for a high tackle. We've would seen you, some good hits from both sides. Would you expect anything less in a test match? Not between Australia and Great Britain, nor Australia and New Zealand. But here's Langer. Langer's over the halfway. Langer, he throws it over the top. He went the wrong way. Gillespie knocked it on. He couldn't handle it. Langer got it back. He's offside. Obviously, he was in front of Gillespie when he last touched it. And so the penalty goes to Great Britain. Well, the KFC replay will tell the story here. Now, here's Langer making the break. Look for support both ways. There was the touch, I thought, by Great Britain. Then back to Gillespie, then forward again to Langer. An obvious offside. Yes, there was a little touch from Gillespie. Can't uh, say the referee made a mistake. In fact, very well picked up because he could have easily thought that may have just touched the Great Britain player, but a dead set touch Gillespie. I thought he perhaps could have... Uh... Well, Langer was put in a very difficult position. It came off Gillespie and Langer was simply in front of him. He had to make contact with it. He, he couldn't just disappear. Now, here's... Uh... Great Britain with the ball just inside Australia's territory. Schofield, the long ball. This is Powell. Well, they are prepared to try things. You know, they're losing ground there in an effort to try and get around the Australian defensive line. Schofield. Well, the Australian team know that this team can attack from anywhere, and they know that they've got to defend very well. Here's Betts. 
but they also know that they don't attack well tonight. This team's improved so much in defence and their pattern has improved under Mal, really, that they could really cause an upset. The high kick is from Stedman. It's a good one, too. Eddinghausen a little bit under, unsure under the high ball, knocks it on. Now, he hasn't been confident all season, to my mind, Bill, Andrew Eddinghausen, and uh, he just didn't, to my... I didn't look well, at this look on the at, KFC. That. That's right. On the KFC replay, he had very little protection. I didn't think it was a great kick. There was some chase there, but the rest of the Australians were prepared to let Eddinghausen have to do it on his own, and he came up with a mistake, and Great Britain in with another great chance. And that pass looked marginally forward to Clark, but he did well again, this lad from uh, the Wigan Club. He's only played a few first-grade games, you know. A lot of people were surprised he even came on the tour. Well, he's shown in a few glimpses here in his, the Test match here that he can play. Already we're getting an example of what these five Wigan forwards can do out of the six in the pack. They're keeping going forward and they're keeping the pressure on. This is uh, Betts. He's only a few metres out. Dermot. Schofield. The long pass finds the fire. Good defence, but he managed to almost keep the movement going. And the referee said a penalty against Australia for being up inside the five. And Schofield thinks about taking the quick tap. And he decides to. Strange tactics. Especially in a test match. Oh, you've got to take the two points when they're an offering, and they were. He'll probably make a lie of me now with a try. Very hard against this side, but then they're willing to throw the football around as Great Britain run it across field. That looks like Lucas who's come onto the football field. No, it's not. It's Joe Lydon who's come out there. Now they go and move it wide quickly out towards the far wing, and New Love. New Love manages to do pretty well in trying to keep on his feet and keep the movement going. Great Britain with a line, 10 metres out. They throw it away and taking it up hard and strongly this time was Platt. He's only a metre sure of the Australian line. Nil all the score line. 21 minutes remain in the first half. Clark. Schofield, the long pass. Here's a chance, but they can't keep it going. Yes, they can. Finally, it's gone loose, and Stedman kicks it into touch. I wonder if Schofield would like to go back and have the kick for goal now. <laughs> but they're trying, Great Britain. They're staying on their feet. And there's Andy Gregory ready to come back. He spent his 10 minutes in the sin bin and now back to try and lead the way and make up for the sins of his ways. Now, is it Lachlan who's gone off? I think it is. He looked as if he limped across to take that early shot at penalty goal, and that may well have been, that, of course, Bill, why they didn't have the shot. Then Schofield wasn't quite sure who should take it. I presume Stedman would have well, a he, shot. He can kick himself, Schofield. Oh, of course he can. As opposed to this team can. Now, Australia have to settle down a bit. We're still in the early rounds, aren't we? And neither team has, has developed into their rhythm. They've had the, the odd chance to break the line, but it's come to nothing. And here's another one. This is the man who's been the best attacking player on the field so far. And that's a high tackle from Leiden. Leiden will get 10 in the bin for this possibly as well. That was late and high. Always oh, told him to just keep them down. I thought that was worse than Gregory's. The international meeting made it very clear, and here on the KFC replay, we can see what they were talking about. They've made it very clear that high tackles are outlawed. That was a shot over the top. I thought it was more of a reflex thing, but it brings the penalty still. Well, Gregory's, I thought, was one of those things. He just went up and... I mean, that can happen. He's got to jump a long a... way. Yeah, the heat of a moment in a test match, but that looked as if it was almost premeditated. Joe Lydon is very pumped up. Here's uh, Wishart, 12 metres out from the Great Britain line. Good attacking position now for Australia. Now, Lindner. A few metres out. Australia running hard through Sirenen, using the big battering rams, the big second rowers. Now, look what for the Linger. Now, here it is, Langer. Finds Jackson. Jackson trying to keep his arms free to pop it back on the inside where Gillespie and Eddinghausen were lurking precariously. Now Langer gets it away to Meninga. Great defence. Andy Gregory did magnificently well. He was the first man in to stop Meninga getting any chance to get that ball away. Langer. Langer puts the little kick in behind the opposition. But Leiden, he couldn't do much about it, nor could anyone else for that matter. It goes touch in goal. And play will restart from the centre of the Great Britain quarter line. What Langer would have wanted there was to keep the ball in play in goal and then get the ball back from the line dropout. There's the KFC replay. It was just a little bit too heavily weighted. It went dead in goal and Great Britain now get a breather. Great Britain and Australia, both sides have been under enormous pressure. It's been a great start to this uh, KFC battle for the Ashes, which is basically what we expected. Dermot. 
a lot of people knock Mal really for bringing so many Wigan forwards out with him. Bill, well, they've certainly proved their medal in the first uh, 22 minutes of this test match. What have they got? A touring party with 13 from Wigan and 19 from the other club. So it shows the strength of that club. Mighty kick. 10 metres out from the Australian line where this scrum will go down. And the and handling errors in the KFC replay, Australia 5, Great Britain 0. So the scrum just 10 metres in from the western touchline. The members stand here at the Sydney Football nice, Stadium. Be a nice place to win one against the head. Not much doubt the way they feed these days, but... Well, there's no such thing as a feed, is there? Yeah, <laughs> in the second row. Australia bring it back. And of course, many New Zealanders will also be interested to know that uh, there's a big uh, rugby union test match on this very ground tomorrow. How would you like to be the groundsman having to change all the logos on the ground? And again on Sunday for the Winfield Cup. <laughs> As Gillespie brings it out, midway half and quarter line, inside Australia's territory, Steve Walters goes for a little gallop and he's found Jackson in support. Over the halfway he goes. That isn't an, er an area where Australia are catching Great Britain out. The speed of the play, the balls, is much quicker than Great Britain. Langer's kick off the side of the boot, but off here, or a fire. Call him what you like, but I know in New Zealand they prefer to be calling chariots of fire, and this is the reason why. Have a look at the speed of the man. A look at chariots of fire going. Eddinghausen magnificent again in cover defence. But Martin of Fire's pace, his ability to get on the outside of the man, I don't think I've ever seen a winger as well as that. He is just something special. This is what football's all about, seeing wingers get on the outside. Look at this on the KFC replay. Through the defence, away from Wishart, and look at the man stretch out. Gee, he's got some pace. He stands them up, away he goes, and only the pace and anticipation of Eddinghausen manages to use the touchline to effect. First of all, it was a show of strength, and then it was a, a display of pace. How much has he improved in the last two years since we saw him in England and four years ago when we saw him out here? And, of course, with Stinson, Easton, and George in between. David, I don't know that he's got any faster, but his positional plays a lot better. Siren and the pass over the top. Gee, I don't think Bob Fulton would be happy to see that down on the quarter line area. This man can produce something out of nothing. No, Hancock. Hancock. Hancock still going. Michael Hancock. Good run from Hancock. Hancock uses the referee well as he gets up towards the halfway line. Good play from Michael Hancock. But the referee's calling it back for something. He's going to give a penalty to Australia two metres out from the quarter line. Now, we're going to need some help here from the replay, but the indication from Mr Hale was that it was for a trip in the back play. Well, there's Michael Hancock, all that effort for nothing. Well, I suppose it wasn't, because here it is on the KFC replay. Look at this. Out of one, the dodge back on the inside of Crooks. Stands up Clark, gets out of another, and it comes down towards uh, the halfway line before he's taken by Dermot. Well, that, if, if that was for supposedly the attempted trip by Philip Clark, I didn't see much in it unless he's got very large boots. Australia probably would have preferred the ball where Hancock had got it because they lost about 15 well, metres out of it. they were on a roll. You know, a quick play for play the ball from there will give you a quality ruck on the next play of the ball. Here's Harrigan brings it up. 40 and three quarter minutes left in the first half and it's still nil all as another penalty goes Australia's way. It's Australia nil. Great Britain nil. As the Great Britain players on the sideline as we watch a KFC replay of the, the Chief being really poleaxed there. That was a tackle that looked to be Dermot who came in. Sean Edwards Plenty of experience there warming up. And plenty of uh, ability in scoring the tries when players are tied at the end of a very willing and hard first half. He's got some great skills. As Australia bring it up now through Gillespie. Plenty of experience in this fellow too. Down towards the Great Britain quarter line. Still no try in this test match. Still no goal in this test match. And here's Sirenen. Sirenen within 12 metres of the line. That's a good platform to work off. Australia will want that. The forward's going forward, and then they'll look to shift it wide just like this. Meninga. He brings in Daly. He gets it away to Wishart. And Wishart is taken in good, solid defence. That was good stuff. It was Schofield who got there to cut that right off. Only 10 metres out. Now, here's Daly. Daly looked for someone back on the inside, but Jackson had gone the other way. Steve Walters. Daly tried... Well, he, I think he tried to play it. 
I think he did try to play it in the end. He accidentally, I think, played it forward. The referee said he's interfered with. Well, I thought that might have been a little bit tough on Great Britain. He got to his feet very quickly, but he played the ball badly, Daly. That was one that could have gone either way. On the KFC replay, I thought they were a bit unfairly done by. Well, mate, when you have a look at it, I'm wondering whether Laurie even didn't deliberately That's right. play it forward to try and get a penalty. So well, the referee may have interpreted the way Laurie thought, that he wasn't able to get up and play the ball, so he played it forward to catch them, perhaps. Such is home ground advantage. <laughs> True. And now Rod Wishart with a chance to post the first points on the board. And Wishart... And Rod Wishart is 23 for the Warwick Club. Just a touch under six foot, five feet ten, 178 centimetres. He's another very solidly built boy. 14 stone two, he's played four tests. Hails from Jerringong originally, the home of another mighty Australian kangaroo, Michael Cronin, great goal kicker, great player. And you can see with that strapping on his left leg, he was under an injury cloud early in the week with a hamstring. He came through it and he's taking the goal kicking duties. Martin Offia, what a sensational start to the game he's had. I'll tell you a story about his name shortly. Make it short. <laughs> and here's Rod Wishart in a reasonably good position to kick a goal for him. He's been in good form. This is a good chance to put the first points of the Test Series on the board. And he's got it. Two points to Australia. The KFC scoreboard will show that Rod Wishart has opened the scoring in this battle for the Ashes with a penalty goal. And with just under 12 minutes remaining in the first half, it's Australia 2, Great Britain 0. And the story about Offia and a fire is that when asked what his real name is, he says Martin Offia. But I don't mind if you call me a fire because it's nice to be related to the chariots of fire and what it really means. So, really, he doesn't mind what you call him. You wouldn't like to race him for your breakfast, would you? I didn't mind when he played for St George. Probably scored 12 tries in 11 matches. Here's Schofield kicking off. And it's Langer who takes it. The long pass. Eddinghausen and now Sirenen. And Sirenen, which you'd expect it to be either Sirenen or Linda to bring it back from that position. Sirenen came into this game with some criticism. There were some people who felt that his state of origin form hadn't warranted Australian selection, but Bob Fulton as a coach likes big players, and Sirenen is all of that. He certainly is, and so is this fellow, Paul Harrigan. They keep it going the same way. Here's Linda. Linda, quick hands, and it's Wishart again, who's got to the halfway. Good backing up from Jackson. In turn, it's great stuff from Meninga. Meninga down to the quarter line. Back on the inside's Gillespie. He's got Eddinghausen with him. Oh, great defence, Great Britain. Great attack from Australia. Meninga, Meninga still going. Meninga will score. That is a sensational try. That is a great try. That is a try similar in importance to the one he scored only two years ago at Old Trafford in the dying moments of the series when the break was made by Stewart Meninga went to score on the KFC replay look at this great hands from Meninga great backing up from Jackson after good work from Wishart Meninga again in the movement Meninga busts through one the pass on the inside finds Gillespie great defence from Great Britain and then the backing up from Australia Jackson Meninga and in the end Great Britain ran out of numbers you won't see many better tries than that Meninga, the man is superb. Sometimes words are inadequate. Just sit back and enjoy this KFC replay and see rugby league at its greatest. It started way back inside the Australian quarter with Mal Meninga, and there's the man taking a well-earned drink. And Mal Meninga, well, it's a very large profile for him. Have a look at the size and weight of the man. Just over six feet, 92 kilograms, 17 stone two. This is 35th test, just one to go to re equal Reg Gasnier's record of 36. Plays for Canberra, a mighty man, a mighty player. And in years to come will be regarded as a mighty captain as well. Because in Melbourne in a fortnight's time, he equals the record. Held by uh, Keith Holman, 14 tests against Great Britain. Against Great Britain, and he also equals Gasnier's record on that night. And then, uh, of course, in Brisbane, he gets the opportunity to go one in front. And the most points ever for Australia in test matches, 220, and he doesn't get a kick tonight. The way that this fellow's kicking, you wouldn't be taking the duties off him. Just outside the quarter line, that's the 10-metre line you can see there. That's 10 in from touch. Wish out. The kick looks good off the boot. It's a beauty. It's two more points. And on the KFC scoreboard, with eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half, Australia skip away to lead by eight points to nil. 
and that try just showed you, gee, there were some skills in that try, some great backing up, some great handling, some great ins and outs, and you had to praise Great Britain the way they closed Australia down when they went to the centre through Eddinghausen, and then Australia still had the backing up. Gee, that was a good try, It Bill. was very un-Australia-like. Normally, Australian teams like to belt the ball up out of their own quarter, and they don't try things until they've got field position. Here, they exploded from deep inside their own quarter and got a result. Wasn't it great to see? Linda away allows the ball to bounce. She brings it back to the quarter line. But there were so many good skills, and it, it was really just Great Britain ran out of numbers in the end. The great support play. It was just player after player getting up off the ground, putting himself in a position to receive the ball inside, outside passing, and what a four points. It was worth more than four. It might have been worth more than four because it might have broken the Great Britain hearts. They'd done so well. They'd been down here for so long. And now they're behind, and this man certainly is having a great game again. They're just giving him too much latitude at the moment, Langer. 30 metres out, Walters. This is Clyde. What Australia's doing is threatening the Great Britain defensive line in a number of positions, from dummy half firstly, then Langer one off the ruck, and if he fires the ball a little bit wider, the players out there are having a poke as well. So the defensive line for Great Britain's in a bit of doubt just where the attack's coming from. Stedman brings the ball back after the kick from Eddinghausen. 32 metres out he is from his own line. The dummy from Dermot. And he pinches a good five or six yeah, metres. Very, very crucial part of the game here for England. They can't allow Australia to score next. And if possible, they've got to try and post points themselves before half-time. This is Betts. Gregory, his Wigan teammates in at dummy half. Schofield. A long pass out wide. Here's Powell and back on the inside. He brings new love. This fellow from Featherston has a heap of pace, but we haven't had a chance to see it yet. He showed a bit of strength early when he stood up when three Australians were trying to put him on the deck. But he's very highly rated, penalty against Australia. I'm not sure whether Andy Gregory won that. <laughs> I think he tried to referee and got it. Well, it's a game of cat and mouse, isn't it? You've got to get some your way. And here it is on the KFC replay. You'll notice that uh, Harrigan and Gillespie Harrigan especially lying all over the player. And, and Andy Gregory says, come on. Good luck to him. Great kick, Lydon. That's Powell there, who was the man who was tackled, but it was Lydon who took the kick, and this is certainly set and up. I, and I hope for the sake of this match and this series that Great Britain can put points on here. Well, this is a great opportunity for them. Gregory screaming at his players. Come on, quick play of the ball. As it comes to Clark. Clark gets on the inside. That was Clyde that he got away from initially. Now it comes away. Gregory runs it one way, runs it across field, gets it away to Powell. Powell takes that superbly and then's equally well tackled only a couple of meters out gee that was good football here's a fire not necessarily a good pass it comes to gregory back to crooks and crooks is only 12 meters away and now he's lost the ball and harrigan driven back but he's got the pass away and daily gee if they'd bought that he may well have been able to send Hancock on a long run downfield. There are mistakes and there are mistakes, and that was a poor position for Great Britain to play one. They needed to play a good set of six there. They wanted to play a strong five, then put the ball in goal and get it back and keep applying a pressure. What they did was come up with an error and take all the heat off. So what about Daryl Powell? Wasn't that a magical take? It's Gillespie who's playing a wow of a game since Lazarus went off with that very poor cut. Quick play of the ball, and Steve Walters gets within 10 metres. See, the crowd thought they were offside. I think some of them might be right too. Langer. Jackson. Jackson stands them up. He's got support again as it comes to Meninga. Meninga's got heaps of support. Meninga on his own. Meninga, oh, perhaps he should have passed that. No, on the outside, he had Clyde and Wishart. No, perhaps about it. He should have passed it. Clyde might still make the Great Britain team pay for it, but he didn't. As he's bundled in the touch, he's not happy, but Mal's feeling worse. Yeah, Mal Meninga's done some great things over the years, but if we see this one on the KFC replay, this wasn't one of them. He had Lindemann and Wishart unmarked on the outside and didn't give them the ball. Nettinghausen on the inside. And here it is, good defence this, as they get Clyde across the touchline. And now they've got possession back for the last four minutes or so of this first half. And on the KFC scoreboard, Australia are leading Great Britain by eight points to nil. And the disappointing thing for Great Britain would be that in the first 15 or 20 minutes, when our communications to New Zealand were so poor, they did have some scoring opportunities. A fire got away twice down the sideline, but they couldn't turn them into points. I think some gremlins must have got in the line at that stage, Bill, but thankfully everything's all right at the moment. Last tackle. This is obviously an area where 
Australia so often gets on top, especially against Great Britain. The last 10 minutes or so of each half, it was an area that Mal really, really tried to work on to get his players, make them fitter and stronger for 40 minutes each half. But the thing that the Australians have got going for them is that tough week-in, week-out competition they play, and of course, state of origin football, which is played at this frantic pace. Daly starting to come into his own. Meninga on the inside finds Wishart. Crowd thought it was a bit high. He didn't the think so. The Australians are catching them out on the edges. The Great Britain defence out there isn't coming up. It's holding them. There's a chance. Harrigan. Harrigan slips the pass away. It's a shocker. If he passed it straight away, they had an overlap three on two. In the end, Schofield tries to get away from Hancock and Carr. That was another example of it, David, with the Australians pushing the ball quickly out wide and Great Britain not moving up. Now, what's going to happen here? Daly's back there. Coming through very quickly, he's under enormous pressure. Stedman thought he got there first. He's appealing for the try. The referee says line dropout. Well, he put his hand up and the referee said not out. But look at the way Laurie Daly on the KFC replay keeps his eye on the football, listening to his players' call, no doubt, keeping him, keeping himself in front of Stedman, and he's got the football. Well and truly, he had it. Stedman might have had an arm in there, but he never had the football, did he? Uh, very good fundamentals there by Daly. He kept his body between the ball and the chaser, and there was no way that Stedman was ever going to be able to get through to it. So, Australia, where's the football going? Well, they're not Australia. One minute 56 to go. They're not going to be in any hurry to get this one back into play, but one minute 56 is a long time in a game of rugby league, and Great Britain should be able to get five or six tackles at them here. And Gillespie was down hurt just for a, a moment in background. In fact, he only just managed to get back behind the... Now this, this is where you've got to keep your cool and make sure you get maximum use out of your six. You don't do something silly on one, two or three. You just keep building the ball up. If they could get a penalty and get two points, they'd be happy. You've just got to keep coming and try something on the last or second last tackle. Dermot. Great Britain through Gregory. And Gregory is taken well by his opposite number, Langer, but offside. Now, this is what they needed. They must kick the goal here. There is no decision to make. They must take the two points. Andy Gregory looked straight at the post, looked at the referee, looked across at Schofield and said, we've got to kick for goal. On the KFC replay, what a great clash of these two magnificent players. Langer, never known really for the strength compared to Gregory, but yet he's always shown it. I remember when he first was chosen for State of Origin, Bill, you may remember, Wally Lewis was one who said, gee, has this little fella got enough strength to stand up with the, the, the power of State of Origin? Yeah. Crook's taking over the goal-kicking duties, I might add. It's not just size, is it? It's strength in relation to size, and, and that's what he's got. He's got very good leverage. Now, there's Gregory. He's made the decision here that he wants to kick for goal. Crooks has come up and put the ball on the mound. So Lee Crooks, he's played many test matches. His first way back in 1982. He's had numerous clubs, currently with Castleford. Six foot one, touch under 16 stone at 100 kilograms. And this is his 18th test match. And he's always been a more than quality goal kicker. The chance to bring it back to just six points the margin right on half time. In fact, I don't think we'll get much more of this first half in. There's the kick, it's a wobbly old one, but it's enough. I think he thought he was kicking from the corner, but he managed to scrape it, keep, scrape it across the crossbar. And the score, hot half time on the KFC scoreboard, is Australia 8 leading Great Britain 2 as Lee Crooks comes from the field. And Paul Surinan, who's had a wow of a game in Martin of Fire. We've seen glimpses of the speed. We see the ball kicked off for the second half, and here's Paul Surinan bringing the ball back. He's had a strong first half, and he's up there and immediately taken down. Crooks was again involved in the defence, along with Andy Platt, as Australia bring the ball out from their own end of the field through Clyde, almost out to their own quarter line. Steve Walters, the dummy half. Linda goes for a run out wide. Takes it to just outside the quarter line, over on that eastern side of the field. Harrigan, midway half and quarter line, inside Australia's territory. Walters, Walters goes for a little run up over the halfway he goes. Good run by the Australian hooker. Yeah, some danger signs there. Last tackle, Langer to kick for this open side of the field, in behind New Love. He looks down the, behind him as if to think, well, is Hancock there? He isn't, but there's plenty of Australian Guernseys up there to put him on the deck. And the scoreline here on the KFC scoreboard is Australia 8, Great Britain 2. 
one minute or so into the second half of this KFC battle for the Ashes as Great Britain bring it back to their own quarter line. On the quarter line, Great Britain, they must score next, you'd feel, as they are to win this test match. Australia 8, Great Britain 2. Andy Gregory, the little grubber, knocked on by Australia. This will be six to go, and it is as New Love picks it up. Langer couldn't handle it. Good thinking from Gregory. He's always been a hard nut to crack, hasn't he, for Australia? I think the key element in the game is that even though Australia have that handy lead, that if Great Britain are good enough, they're close enough. That's a good ball and ball tackled. Powell taken up. Beautiful ball from Schofield and great tackle from Meninga. And so the tackling in the first half, Great Britain have had to do a bit more than Australia. Australia 91, Great Britain 110. And for Australia, Siren and Walters and Harrigan, three of the forwards, as you'd expect, doing most of the work. While for Great Britain, Crooks, who loves starting test matches, hates being on the bench, is doing the job well, as too as Betts and Clark, who came into the side at the last moment instead of Ellery Hanley. As Wishart makes some important metres for Australia. It was a mixed first half, wasn't it, with, you know, Britain looking to try to do things early and not coming to much, really, but then uncharacteristically, Australia cutting loose and here they go again early in the second half. They're looking to get the ball out wide. Great Britain defensive line isn't coming up out there. They're being caught short, and Australia getting them on the edges. Sean Edwards on the field too, I noticed, Bill. Yeah, well, you know, he'll do a lot for their attack, but it's their, de their defence that needs addressing at the moment. Ball's loose, but Australia have a chance here if he can get the ball away. Harrigan can't. And once again, Australia had the numbers, but couldn't get the ball to where it counted. Meninga deciding to kick in behind... A fires wing and down to the quarter, low, quarter line. And Stedman it is who brings it back and brings it back solidly. Just ankle tap from behind as he gets to the halfway line. Gregory finds a runner in Crooks. Yeah, that's better. A bit of go forward and an effort to play the ball quickly. He could have pulled a penalty then. Almost did, I think. The referee had a look at it. Penalty against Australia this time, though. Better late than never. Well, it's 10 metres further down fairly. Be happy with that. Schofield and Gregory having a committee meeting to decide what to do. I think Hale's kept a very good five metres and he's been one of the reasons that it's allowed the game to open up the way it has. He's done a good job. Lydon, who has a very strong boot on him, finds touch. He's kicked some remarkable field goals on his time. One in a semi-final a few years ago from about 60 metres out in a Challenge Cup match. New Zealand bring it back. Well, I, I coached Lee Crooks when he played in 1987 with Balmain and I've never seen him work as hard in defence as he has here this evening. And he, there he is popping the ball back on the inside to Platt who's taken in good strong Australian defence. On the quarter line, Gregory switches the point of the attack through Edwards. Sean Edwards out wide, finds Betts, trying to work towards Lydon's wing. 20 metres still short of the Australian line. Almost on the Western touch line. Lydon, Edwards, Lydon, runs into Surinan. Yeah, wished he hadn't. But they're not going forward. They're playing across the field at the moment. A lot of passing, but no one going the, the right way, which is down the centre. That's a better run. And now Platt looked got for someone, and there was nobody at home. Open side. They come through Gregory. Gregory, the grubber, brilliantly picked off by Eddinghausen. Gee, that was good play. He mightn't have played as confidently, Bill, as we know he can during the State of Origin series, but except for that one blemish, what a brilliant pick-up on the KFC replay. Uh, brilliant reflexes there by Eddie House and picked that up off the bootstraps, and he was on the move. I was about to say, we, we didn't see him at his best during the State of Origin, but gee, tonight I thought Eddinghausen's uh, really come back to his best with the exception of that one blemish. Yeah, that one blemish when he never had a lot of protection. That was, that was the only blot on what otherwise has been a super match. Jackson thought about the kick, decided to go on the gallop. 10 metres out from his own quarter line. And we shouldn't underestimate the, the role that Peter Jackson's played here this evening at 5'8". He's touched the ball first with Alan Langer on a lot of occasions and he's helped direct the, direct the traffic and move the ball to where the Australians have wanted to get it. Now bringing the ball back, Stedman with only one boot now. <laughs> An easy meet in the end for Paul Siren who's having a, a devastating effect on this game. He really is getting through some work. Australian forwards doing their job. Remember, Lazarus had to leave the field in the first five minutes of the game with a very nasty gash. 
and Gillespie's come on to do the job. Gregory has spent 10 in the sin bin. The pass under pressure from Edwards that went back to Crooks. Yeah, there's a lack of coordination there from Great Britain. There was a lot of passing one way, then the other, but no one really driving the ball down the field. Now they look to go wide. Schofield! Schofield's gone straight through them. He's down to the quarter line, back on the inside. The Great Britain movement cut down momentarily. Here's a fire, a fire, dodging, weaving, trying to find a bit of space. And in the end, it's the second row of Serenin again. 22 metres out. Last tackle. What a great bit of football from Schofield. It almost brought a try. The kick taken on the full in the end goal by Eddinghausen. And play will restart with the tap kick from the centre of the quarter line. And Andy Gregory devastated. Frustration there from Andy Gregory. It was the last tackle. He had to do something, but there was no chase on the kick. The Australian fullback Eddinghausen took it easily in goal. And now play will restart with a tap from the quarter. It's a good bit of football that saw Schofield get into space, though. Well, that's the Bill. sort of thing that we know that they can do, that they've got great catching and passing skills. There's not a great deal of structure to the Great Britain game, but they do support, they can find holes, and when they do that, they can go on with it. There's a lot of flair there, a lot of creativity. 12 metres out from the quarter line. Straight down the centre comes Harrigan. Picked off again. He started to work Harrigan out a bit, Bill, but uh, he's played uh, played well in this his first test match. Langer, the little chip and chase. I thought he was attempted to be tripped then. I think the referee's going to ping them. He is. I thought Langer put the kick in perfectly, and it was a little right boot. Now, look at this on the KFC replay. Alan Langer put the ball ahead. The right boot went out there, just caught Langer. He tried to maintain his balance. But referee Hale right on the spot and blew the whistle. Yes, I thought there was a deliberate movement to impede him. I'd love to have had a head-on shot to just see, but I thought, to my mind anyway, Bill, that there was a right foot that went out as much as the... Uh it looked to be Betts well, trying to swivel and turn and you, impede his progress. You must have your referees ticket. <laughs> On the quarter line, Australia with a chance. The little run around, and in the end, it was a ball that finished up with Linda, who had to check slightly. Wasn't quite the timing that Australia would have liked then. Here's Langer. Langer, the dummy. Harrigan takes it up strongly again. He's a handful, isn't he? 12 metres out. I've seen a lot of him this year playing for Newcastle, Bill. He's not 100%, the big fellow. Langer. Of course, New Zealanders saw him in action when he played over there against Manly. As the ball comes wide to Meninga, here's a chance for Australia. Back on the inside. They're still going through Clyde. The pass comes across. It's going to be an Australian try to Meninga. Another try. Meninga scores his second. The big fellow, you can't stop him. Good football. Good combination on that side of the field. The Canberra connection. Meninga and Clyde very heavily involved. Meninga scores his second. 31 rem minutes remaining in the match. And on the KFC replay, Daly, Meninga, both from Canberra. Another Canberra player there is Clyde. Clyde, great strength. Draws in beautifully a fire. And the big fellow Meninga does the rest. There it is again on the KFC replay. In the first half, it looked like Meninga bombed a try when he didn't pass when he could have. But on this occasion, he didn't need to. Daly shrugged his way clear of a tackle. Got the ball on to Mal Meninga. And he's too big too fast when he gets this close to the line Clyde got the ball back to him after that initial break, now from here he's unstoppable, like a steam train sticks out the big right hand and plants it down so Mal Meninga on the KFC scoreboard, it's 12 points to 2 Meninga the scorer and the Canberra connection very much involved Daly, Meninga and Clyde and once again, it was out wide. You know, it wasn't that up-the-middle stuff. It's just out on the edges, and Australia catching them short for numbers. So now Meninga will have uh, some happy and some unhappy happy memories of this ground. A few years ago, playing against the rest of the world, you may remember, Bill, he broke his arm in one of the, the few comebacks that he tried with that incredibly bad broken arm that he broke in 1987 he's bashing with a goal post he broke it four times in two years so what a remarkable comeback it has been and now in happier times in the twilight of his career who said he is he might go to the second row yet here's Wishart out on the sideline as you can see a meter in from touch he struck it sweetly it's coming around just across the face of the goal and so on the KFC scoreboard, just under a half an hour remaining in this match. And Australia are leading Great Britain by 12 points to two. And 10 points at this stage, Bill, is a pretty good cushion. 
as Wishart makes his way back well inside Australia's territory. And oh, what could have been had Schofield been able to find a fire in the right position when he made that break in the initial part of the second half. Yeah, rugby league's a game of taking your chances when they came. Great Britain didn't quite make the most of theirs, and Australia have. There's still a long way to go, but there are danger signals. Hedinghausen misses the bounce. Sirenham was there. In the end, Hedinghausen decides to bring it back himself. And missed tackles is probably the key to the game. Australia have only missed nine, but Great Britain have already allowed in two tries and they've missed 21 tackles. That's too high. You know, I always worked as a coach that in a game you could work on about 12 to 14 being your average. But when you're giving Australia this many opportunities and obviously they're unloading in tackles and getting the ball away, you're just putting too much pressure on your other mates in your defensive line. Langer. Not much in this game as far as possession is concerned, but Australia using the ball better. And as we just pointed out, Great Britain missing the tackles, which means Australia being able to play so much more of the football down this end of the park. Good tackle from Gillespie, who was up there on Martin Afire. Edwards. I don't think Martin enjoyed it. Another good piece of Australian defence. And a little knock on there too. And look at these Australian forwards. They're all fired up. Clark. Here he is on the KFC replay. Good tackle. Underneath was Clyde. Over the top was Jackson. There's the knock-on. And the enthusiasm from the Australian forwards is starting to, yeah. I think, tell what, here. What you're starting to see is the superior condition of the Australians with that hard week-in, week-out competition. Jackson. Eddinghausen. 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 He can't get away. Yes, he can. Good run from Eddinghausen. He just could not load to wish out at the right time. As Skerritt leaves the field for Great Britain. Australia, a penalty against Great Britain. It's against Clark. But Great Britain will be hoping here that Australia kick for goal. They needed some respite. The last thing they'll want, and here it is on the KFC replay. Clyde goes in. There's the tackle by Clark. Over the top, adjudicated as being a bit high. They'll hope Australia kick for goal. They needed a, they needed a break. The Australians were really coming at them. And Mal Meninga doing just that, saying to Rod Wishart, take the two points. Then they have to score two converted tries, mm. even to draw level. I know ethically it's you know not what you'd want to hear, but that's just what Great Britain would want. They would hope even that he kicks this and they can get the ball down the other end of the field. It would be a bonus if he, if you know if he was to miss it. They just need to get some field position back and get their thoughts together. And Lee Brooks doesn't he know it? You know, come on, fellas, we can still win it, but we've got to lift. Well, he's another man who has captained Great Britain, of course, Sir Bill. He's a man that knows a little bit about leadership. You just wonder how much they are missing the inspiration of Ellery Hanley. Steadman. If Crooks played, you might remember, way back in that first Test match on the 1982, the 1982 tour when Australia won so easily and started that phenomenal run. Not that they hadn't started it before that, but started to set up that invincibility. In fact, they were called the Invincibles, that group. And Crooks really is desperate for victory. Wishart equally desperate for Australia moves in the raw says well, there's the bonus there's nothing there and that, so Wishart coming back well that was the bonus he missed the goal and Great Britain have had a breather now they'll be hoping for the long drop out from the quarter get down the other end and try and keep the Australians in their own half Australia leading Great Britain by 12 points to two, just under 25 minutes remaining in the match. And Langer and Jackson, they're the men that have been doing all the work for Australia. They've been pushing the ball in the right directions. They've been scheming around their rucks. They've been keeping this Great Britain defence honest. Here it is again. Langer, Langer on to Jackson. The long ball out to Daly. And quick hands comes away to Hancock. Good cover from Great Britain. Hancock, look at this. Four Great Britain players in there. And he's lost the football. It's loose on the ground. Great Britain have got it. Reverie's going to play the knock on anyway. But plenty of Great Britain Guernseys came in there. Here it is on the KFC replay. Well, it's a bit hard to tell exactly what happened, even with the benefit of the KFC replay. I think there might have been a slight right hand or something going there, and uh, Hancock re presented it. Is that Dermot leaving the field? It appears so. 
They're very high up here in the Western Grandstand. In fact, they look like ants on the, uh, the playing surface. It's very high. In fact, if you're ever at Athletic Park and go to the ground there, the commentary position on that western side of the field, well, you're a, you're a lot further away than that, I can assure you of that. Come on then, look, they've got to get some power play into their game here, Great Britain. They've got to get some go forward. They're going backwards here to try and get around the Australians through Schofield. But they haven't gone anywhere. They've gone 60 metres across the field, but nowhere down the field. Jackson's the new player on, Michael Jackson. I don't know how he sings, but we'll see how he plays rugby league. As Eddinghausen brings it back now for Australia. He'll earn more money singing. <laughs> well, if he's as good as the other fella, he will. Eddinghausen, great run from Eddinghausen. See, when he's confident, he's hot, isn't he? Back to the halfway line. Daly, Langer, Jacks, I should say, Clyde. Jackson was waiting for the ball and didn't get it. Great Britain looking very tired. The defensive line starting to go up slowly. Langer again. Here's Jackson, the what short ball. Lovely pass away to Linda. Linda, back it goes. Oh, Meninga went on the inside, and then Linda didn't throw the pass initially, so he went to the outside, and I wouldn't mind betting Sean Edwards called for it. Once again, it was Langer and Jackson, the architects of that break by Australia. Not sure why he reacted that way. Penalty against us being up inside the five. But you could see Meninga went initially to the inside, waiting for the ball, and then... Here's Jackson, the pass to Bobby Linder on the KFC replay. Now he's streaking away, initially on the inside, there it was, and Meningas was there on the inside, and then started to move to the outside, and Linder just threw the pass at the, the just that wrong time. And don't forget, Jackson only got a start when Shearer pulled out injured. I was about to ask you, do you think Shearer's got a chance of playing the next one? Not on this form. On the halfway line. Here's Crooks. Back on the inside. Well, that's better. A, a little bit of deviation around the rucks that they're trying to get some go forward into their play with a, they're dressing up the, 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 the advantage line. They're just making the Australian defence a little bit uncertain about who is going to bring the ball up. Now, this is one man, Edwards, who can create something out of nothing. And so can this man. But they've got to get around the Australian defence. Schofield well and truly wrapped up by Laurie Daly. A kick from Crooks, he did well remember, he was under enormous pressure and still got his kick in, Crooks. You've got to give him some credit, Bill, haven't you? He has not stopped trying tonight, Lee Crooks. Well, he came out here, I would imagine, as being one of the second string front rowers, but on the strength of that game against Illawarra last Monday, he fought his way into the side. Surinan plays it, he and Jackson not overly uh, on speaking terms at the moment, but this Jackson's going all right, the two of them on the field, one for Australia, one for England. Daly from dummy half. Back towards the halfway line. Australia leading on the KFC scoreboard. 12 points to two as Langer's gone straight through again. Alan Langer down towards the quarter line. Taken and what many in the crowd thought was a high tackle. Quick play of the ball. What are Australia going to do on the last tackle? It comes to Hancock. Hancock does well. Oh, just, just put a foot on the touchline. He did pretty well. He would have got a job on the Bolshoi Ballet the way he was trying to tiptoe and stay in play. Here's Langer on the KFC replay. They're going to have nightmares over him tonight. Look at that, a high tackle. But it didn't worry him. A lot of players may have stayed down looking for the, uh, the penalty then, Bill. He just got straight up and realised there was still a chance. Well, that's the thing he did after he was tripped too. He tried to keep his balance and, you know, he went after the ball. there's the story of the game Australia just uh, grinding away in defense but Great Britain falling off tackle after tackle and one would think in the last 20 minutes of this game and that's all we've got left that the KFC Battle of the Ashes will have to go to Melbourne and Brisbane as far as Great Britain are concerned well you know I'm not a slave to statistics but when you see something as lopsided as, as that the tail with the tape has got to tell you something Edwards can pull something out of the fire but he's going to have to do something Excuse the pun. Well, this bloke will because he's got plenty of chate, plenty of pace, and if this line doesn't come down as one, he'll pick his way through. No, that was better, though. They were there in twos and threes and made sure of the tackle. We've got Langer racing in there to direct traffic. I don't know whether he'd go any good as a traffic cop, mate. You wouldn't be able to see him. He's built so close to the ground. He'd keep nipping away. He's a pretty good rugby league player, though. 
And Linda, who was rocked in a, a bone-shattering tackle in the opening quarter of an hour of the game, has come back and played strongly. Australia bringing the ball back ever so well through Harrigan. Hasn't yeah. he had a great start Look, to his this, career? This, this young kid is going to be in Australian teams for a long time. Walters. Many thought that he was lucky to get in in front of Benny Elias. He hasn't done anything wrong tonight. And I think most of this Australian side knew that victory tonight meant that they certainly went to Princess Park in Melbourne for the next one. The kick, well inside Great Britain territory. Stedman having to go a long way back, picks it up. Daly's there. Now have a look at Great Britain. They've got one man back at the moment to try and get them off their own try line. They are looking desperately tired. Well, it's been played at state of origin pace, hasn't it, Bill? And that is, that is certainly uh, one thing about taking, playing state of origin football compared to Winfield Cup football. Talk to players who play it, and even referees for that matter. Well, look, look, I've always had mixed feelings on state of origin. Is it good because of the hardness of the football and the pace? Or is it bad because it's so mentally and physically draining? Well, on what we've seen here, we'd have to say that it's good because it's got the match hardened. Well, the referee's going to put a scrum down for that. A knock on. You know, that, those sorts of errors are unforgivable. You know, at this level of football, you, you, you cannot play into Australia's hands by just giving them a complete surfeit and complete ownership of possession like this. Lang has got it. Here's Australia with another great chance to post a try and a penalty. They can't kick a goal from this, remember. <laughs> great, great Britain wish they could. a number of Australians talking about what they're going to do here. And Inga comes in, calms things down and says, come on, we've had a couple of set moves at training, let's put one into action. There is no defence out on the Australian wide right-hand side. You know, the, if Australia can push the ball to their right, they're going to come up trumps in the corner. So Harrigan goes to within two metres. The referee saying all of the Great Britain players are offside. As Gillespie charges ahead and dives, he's not quite there. Still on out to the right. They Here keep it, it going the same way. It's Langer. And Langer, I think he... Oh, gee, I thought he'd lost that football then for a moment. Well, Langer saw where the opportunity was, but it looks like it's shut down now when he couldn't get it there. Open side Australia come. Lindner flicks it out the back. That's good football. Now there's an opportunity as Jackson... Jackson keeps going on his own, and they had a huge overlap on the left side. It's still on with a quick play of the ball. And then... Oh, tried a gridiron tactic. You won't dive over the top. Oh, look at it out here. It's on if they can play the football and get it out. Siren and a dummy half. He played a bit of degree iron for a while and scores! Paul Siren scores the try. He trialled in Hawaii to play grid iron. He came back when Bill Anderson, I think, was even at Balmain. He came back as a dwarf compared to what he is now. And look at this. It was a little dummy as if he wanted to play grid iron and then he decides to go on his own and with strength he scores on the KFC replay. Yeah, KFC replay, here it is from end on. We've seen some length of the field tries tonight. Well, this wasn't one of them. It was a simple pushover from dummy half with no defence to confront him. Well, Australia tried something akin to a gridiron move on the previous ruck. And Sirenant, realising that it wasn't on out wide if he didn't throw a good pass, decided to go on his own. The big fella, he plays with the Balmain club. That's the only club he's played with in Sydney. He's 27, 6 feet 4. 112 and a half kilos. No wonder they couldn't stop him from there. It's almost, well, it's almost 18 stone. And this is 12th test match. Rather feed him for a day than a month. Well, I'll tell you a story about him in a second, too. And it's true, he doesn't mind me telling this one. As Wishart lines up from in front, he won't have many easier kicks than this. Some of the crowd starting to wind their way home. But I think only because they weren't going to try and beat the, uh, the rush out of the stadium area. There's still plenty of action left. A quarter of an hour to go. Wishart moves in, strikes it sweetly. Two more points to Rod Wishart. Two more points to Australia. And on the KFC scoreboard, it's Australia 18, leading Great Britain 2. As Sean McRae does his work out there with Rod Wishart. He's been very much involved, Sean McRae, with well, I can hardly, Canberra and Australia. I can hardly wait for this Paul Sirenan story. It must be a good one. Well, it's about his eating habits. And on the 1986 Kangaroo Tour, when Paul was uh, a little bit unhappy with his form, he went over, you may remember, and was chosen to play against Wigan in a team which many indicated was going to be the test team. He started to put on weight like nobody's business, and after the first test, as he comes storming back 
hitting the great defensive hit too. He'll get up quickly. I saw him have five meals in the space of about 20 minutes while other players, normal eaters, had one. And he was still hungry. I don't think I've seen the plates uh, wipe clean so quickly in my life. But he thinks that uh, perhaps he's got taught him a big lesson about he's, diet. He's got plenty to fill. But he does often and talk so about how he changed his career because he realised that he was eating too much of the wrong food and started to eat the right food and he believes he's got a lot more energy because of it. He's shown plenty of it tonight as Australia bring the ball back towards the halfway line. Last tackle. Penalty yeah, good against decision Australia. Too good decision the rule is you get up you face the opponent's goal line and play the ball immediately that wasn't the case <laughs> some, some of the Englishmen might have looked up and, at that and said what's wrong with that the way they play the football over there he's had a good job tonight hasn't he the referee Dennis Hale yeah no com no complaints at all he's kept the teams apart there's been you know a little mischief in the match I, I think he's played his role he couldn't have done any more it's great Britain bring it back this is Ian Lucas Lighten the dummy half. Finds Crooks, this who workhorse who hasn't wasn't... stopped trying, Lee Crooks. He's been an ornament to the rest of the forwards. Well, he wasn't meant to finish the game. He's been forced to because of injury. And that little move involving Andy Gregory and Clark almost came off. And a little knock on, says the referee. And we're going to put a scrum down. That wasn't far away from coming off. Lazarus, who suffered that nasty gash in the opening minutes of the game, didn't want to come off. And didn't come back. Well, the advice was probably as such that uh, why why go out there and uh, perhaps uh, risk some permanent damage? I wonder whether it might have even been a nasty cut behind the ear, Bill. Well, Wayne Bennett must have known something because he had already said that he was going to rest him on Sunday anyhow from the club games. <laughs> a bit of foresight. Does Australia bring it back through Linda. This fellow knows how to play at his best in the big games. You know, you go back to little things in games, and I, I just wonder, had Gary Schofield elected very early in the match to take that two points and just give the Brits the psychological lift that it would have given them if it would have played any role in the outcome? Maybe not, but we'll never know. We'll have to wait to Melbourne. That's on in a fortnight's time at Princess Park. When Australia take on Great Britain for the first time ever, a test match is being played in Melbourne as Martin of Fire is taken again in strong Australian defence. Penalty against Australia though. Syrenham was up there though. Well you've got to be back 10 metres you know they were all well inside the 10 metres following down on the kick and he simply took them on and knew that he was either going to get the penalty or he was going to make the break and the referee play an advantage. The KFC re replay clearly yeah. showed that Martin of Fire had gone about three metres, while most of the other players couldn't have gone yeah. six in that time. And a warning there for Andy Gregory, and I think that's more a case of what we didn't hear than what we didn't see. Knowing the way Andy speaks, it wouldn't have been hard to pick it up with uh, mouth language had we had a camera on it. He's very distinctive. It's, it's Great Britain who bring it back. The Princess Park is more of a VFL ground, and we're going to see a penalty against Australia for the high tackle and again Gregory is being told to get out of it and you want to be perseveres this referee might give him a bit of time in the bit well, there's a Great Britain player who was Jackson Jackson hitting that shoulder charge and he's in all sorts of trouble and Andy Gregory pulling the referee's attention to it now there's the hit fact, on the KFC replay bang by Harrigan and then fact, falls on Lucas, top actually I thought it was Jackson initially but I think we'll find it's Ian Lucas Open side, though, Great Britain, by virtue of those couple of penalties, have got within 24 metres of the Australian line. This is Crooks. Edwards. Edwards can't pull a try out of anything, and penalty against Australia up inside the five. More pressure for Australia. Well, this is one occasion where you don't take the kick for goal. Quick tap here by Schofield and try and post the try. It's exactly what he's done, and Betts has got within nine metres, and Martin of fire. It was that, right there in case the hole opened up. That Great Britain player still down in back play. As now Betts almost forces his way over. The Australian defence just stayed off. Martin a fire in a dummy half. Lydon's on a very wide blind side. There's a fire. Can't get it away to Lydon. Well read Laurie Daly. Good football from Daly. He never allowed a fire with a chance to get that ball out to Lydon. He knew what was on. 
the bad pass beautifully picked up. That was Platt who picked it up. Wasn't that magnificent when you consider this fellow's a second rower come prop? Magnificent hands from Schofield. Lydon, Lydon, the little grubber kick, regathers and scores. Try to Great Britain, Joe Lydon. The little grubber behind the defence. Perfectly positioned. Perfect bit of football. And Lydon, who's always been able to do something, as we saw in the 86 tour one time. And look at this. Magnificent little grubber. Got on the outside of Hancock and scores easily. Even if he hadn't, the only two nearest to him were Martin Fire and Schofield. Great hands by Schofield on the KFC replay. Lydon, the player with all the skills. They had to get around the Australian defensive line. He did it with a little kick and regathered. Great play. And here it is again. Look at this. The way, the way that... Uh, the hands from Schofield just got daily off balance and then the skills of Lydon. Wasn't much Hancock could do as this fellow Lydon is a very gifted player. He plays with Wigan these days. He has had a stint in Australia with East. 28, 6 foot 1, 15 stone of him. He was uh, about 12 stone five years ago, 95 kilograms. He's 26 test too, I might add. Crooks meters in from touch moves in he struck it fairly well it's just going to go to the left and may not have had the legs anyway yeah, there's a coat of paint in it now I think you'll find that we might see play held up for a moment on the KFC scoreboard it's Australia 18 Great Britain 6 because Lucas just hasn't recovered from that hit Mm. And they're taking a stretcher out there. There's three or four trainers, the doctors going out, a couple of doctors. And uh, that's surely got to be the way that's got to be. Surely they've got to pull up play, which the referee has wisely done. It's an early mark for a job well done. First into the showers. The crowd does give him what he deserves. He says thank you. But he really has had a big game. And uh, that's a sight you don't like to see. Linda, the other one, replaced. He's had a mighty game after suffering an early knock. And Lucas being taken from the field after he suffered probably what will go down as the heaviest knock of the game. This fellow hasn't stopped trying now, has he? Clark. Schofield away to Jackson. Wrestled to the ground. Fittler was low and over the top was Gillespie. And they put another one on here, Great Britain. Back on the inside, that player I thought was tackled before he got the football. Always touch well, and go, those. Seven minutes to go. Mathematically, they're not out of it. If they could score a quick try now and convert, they'd be within touch of Australia. But uh, they're at the wrong end of the field to do that. They've got to think about field position, about powering the bow ball forward and taking the chances as they come. Now, there's a bit of initiative, but it's not going to come off from that field position. You don't chip in your own half. Not when you're down 18 points to six playing against these guys. Well, what I think they were trying to do was try and exploit the... A fire speed, but they couldn't. Now, quick hands and Daly's in space as he brings it down well inside Great Britain's quarter line. Inside Great Britain's territory, I should say. Jackson. Jackson. Back on the inside. Find support. Taking it up strongly, Mackay. See, they put themselves back in trouble now. Gave the, gave the ball to Australia in good field position. Langer. Got plenty of numbers out here. Quick hands. It must be a try. Clyde, Clyde, on it comes, Hancock, Hancock's there, try, try to Michael Hancock, and again, it was a good pass from Langer, he knew what was on, but they had to do all the right things, Clyde, I thought, did well, so did Hancock, he won't mind the bump on the head when he gets up tomorrow, he scored another test try, it's Australia 22, leading Great Britain 6, on the KFC replay, quick hands it was a lovely ball to Clyde but Clyde did well he ran Schofield inside out just giving Hancock enough space to beat Stedman for the line the secret of it all on the KFC replay you'll see it here it's the long pass from Langer now that beat two defenders on its own it was over the top good hands from Daly I thought that Clyde might have blown it there I thought he should have given it to Hancock straight away but he turned Schofield inside out then pushed the ball back out to Hancock he had to beat the one tackle and fell in as we see it again, and here's this long pass that Bill's talking about. See the way it cuts out to lovely hands from Daly. Even though Clyde had to check, he did well. He kept Schofield out of the line as far as Hancock was concerned. And the left winger did the rest. He'd be happy with that. 
So Michael Hancock, who's been in and out of the Australian side since 1989, he's still only 22. He plays for Brisbane. He's just on six feet, just over 14 stone. And this is his sixth test. He was very disappointed after the first test at Wembley two years ago when he was dropped from the Australian side. In fact, basically, his major problem was homesickness. He suffered it, would you believe, in 1989 when he went to New Zealand as a young man. But I think he's overcome a lot of that now. Wishart with a difficult conversion attempt from well, right on the sideline. Only Mary Blake she used that excuse. There's the kick from Wishart. The crowd is starting to stand up in the seats behind the goalpost, but it started to swing to the left. And so with four minutes left on the KFC scoreboard, it's Australia 22 leading Great Britain 6. Great Britain bring it back to the halfway. Well, there were a lot of unanswered questions going into this. Great Britain had edged closer to Australia over the last couple of years, and had they gone past them, there'll be a lot of soul-searching in the camp tonight and over the next couple of days. It's not as if it's an impossible position for them to come back and to take that second test, but they're going to have to learn the lessons from here as far as missed tackles and handling errors. Now, Lachlan had to leave the field during the first half. I'm wondering how much that has upset their plans. Australia lost Lazarus, of course. And I suppose on the other side of the coin, can Ellery Hanley come back in a fortnight and take control of this Great Britain side and he, turn it all around? He's an inspirational leader and a, and a, and a great player, but uh, match fitness is the thing, and he hadn't played for eight weeks. They were thinking of, they were considering him for this match, decided against it. And hopefully he'll be right, get a couple of games under his belt for the next one. Clark's done nothing wrong either, has he? But it's a bit different, Hanley, to Clark. As Australia bring the ball up strongly towards the halfway, that's another penalty for a high tackle. It's against Betts. Clyde, Clyde and Schofield get up and almost shake hands after it. See, the game for the most part, Bill, has been played in a magnificent spirit. It's been played as a test match, hard and strong. And of course, the key to any game of football is not so much the tackles you make, it's the tackles you miss. And the story of the match has been told there with Australia scoring four tries to one. And when you miss as many tackles as Great Britain have missed, that's why Australia have really come away with the spoils here in this first KFC Battle for the Ashes match at the Sydney Football Stadium. Again, Langer. Hasn't he had a mighty game? Daly thought about the quick hands again. He decided to just go straight through Leiden. He wasn't really well balanced to throw the pass to Hancock. Walters, Langer again. The long pass, Kevin Walters. 12 metres, Britain side of halfway. Mackay goes from dummy half. He's played a few test matches. And he's first, he scored three against France. He's second, he scored one against New Zealand. So he's had a great start at test football. And this is going to be a scrum for a forward pass. And there was no doubt about it. Hale was right on the spot. It did float forward. England will get the feed. No, so just over a minute ago. Must have been the last tackle. That's right. I didn't see him signal it. So Great Britain, as I said, they've got a lot to think about in the next fortnight. But so did Australia only two years ago when they lost the first match at Wembley and Fulton had to make changes, which he did. One of them was to drop Langer, one was to drop Walters, one was to drop Hancock. Many people thought, well, here we go again. New Zealand in 1985, Fernley dropped a heap of Queenslanders and New Zealand flogged Australia 18-0 in the last test. Fulton dropped a heap of Queenslanders. He didn't do it just because they were Queenslanders. He thought they were out of form which was certainly proved to be the point because they came up with the goods. Well, Great Britain are going to have to probably make some changes. And the key one, Bill, would probably, you'd think, to bring Hanley into the side, even if he's only fit enough to play quarter an hour, 20 minutes, if he can just do something. In the dying seconds of the Test match, Great Britain bringing it back. They've been restricted to a try. It's an Australian victory. There's no doubts about that. This will be the last tackle of the match as the tackle is completed. And Australia win the first of the KFC battle for the Ashes here at the Sydney Football Stadium by 22 points to six. Bradley Clyde. He's had a good...
good game. Meninga, though, has also had a great game. Meninga would be certainly a lot more pleased tonight, Bill, than what he was two years ago when walking off Wembley Stadium. And hail King Laurie. And Laurie Daly had a great game after being shifted from 5-8 out into the centres. A proud Australian captain, Mal Meninga. Disappointed Gary Schofield that led Great Britain. Joe Lydon, who scored that magnificent try that looked like it might have got them back into the game momentarily. OK, and it's the Australian team beating Great Britain by 22 points to six for Australia. Meninga, two tries. Hancock, one, and Siren and one. The goals, three of them kicked by Rod Wishart, while for Great Britain, the try scorer was the replacement who came on early in the game, Joe Lydon, and Lee Crooks kicked the goal for Great Britain. 22 points to six for Australia. The second test match to be played at one of the homes of AFL football, Princes Park, the home of the Carlton Football Club, one of the proudest in Australia. Australia take on Great Britain. It will be a new tradition for playing a test match outside of New South Wales and Queensland. And we'll be back after the break with some of the interviews of the key players of this game. And uh, I thought we stuck to our guns well and our backs really turned it on, but uh, made it feel great and it was a hard match. What about that incident with Lucas in the second half when he went down? Was, was there anything in it? Was it just that he went went down? I think, well, I hit him with my shoulder because my shoulder still hurt a bit, so it was definitely a shoulder hit, but, uh, mate, I don't think there was nothing in it. I suppose I'll go have a look at the videos and see what happens, but, uh, mate, as I, as I said, there was, there was nothing in it and it was just a tackle. Chief, when did you think you had them in the second half or was it late in the first half? What did Bobby Fulton say at half-time? Half-time was more or less consoling what we'd done in the first half and make sure we do it again. And we, we pretty well thought whoever scored again in the second half first would take the match out, and that's what happened. So, you know, very pleasing. And our frame of mind throughout the match was very good. And your big mate, Ciro, got under the post for one. Oh, You've uh, got to be next, eh? I'd be pretty happy to be next. Big Ciro had a great game. It's a big, powerful run, and, and it's just a pleasure to play with him. You had a great game too, mate. Go and enjoy the celebrations. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Champion Championship. He's out.